Hi and welcome back. A while ago I made a video on creative modules that could be used as alternatives to VCAs. The crossfader was my favorite of those. Today I'd like to focus on it and show you some of the many things you can do with it. First, I'll explain why the crossfader is so flexible. Then we'll have a look at a few basic patches and finally a few more complex patches using the Dubfo Dual Crossfader. If you'd like to support this video series or you want to get access to the PDF sheets of the illustrations I use in this and many of my other videos, have a look at my Patreon. But now, let's dive right in. The crossfader is so powerful because it can be used in a variety of different ways. Let me show you which functions you can achieve and how. Although the crossfader is a single module, it holds two voltage controlled amplifiers or VCAs. You can feed a signal into each of those. Let's call them A and B. The result of both VCAs is mixed together and that is the output signal. But the crossfader only has a single CV input that controls both VCAs at the same time. However, the signal to one of them is inverted. So an input signal that opens VCA A, closes VCA B and the other way around. If you feed two different audio signals or control voltages into A and B, the module can be used to mix and crossfade between those two signals, hence the name. But when you just use a single input, you can use it for more regular VCA duties. When VCA A is opened, you get more of that input signal. But since VCA B has no input, when B opens, you just close signal A. When you multiply input signal A and invert that signal externally before going into input B, you can use the crossfader as a voltage controlled polarizer. For example, if a regular envelope goes into A and an inverted version into B, you can use a control voltage to sweep the envelope between positive and negative. This exact setup can be used with audio rate signals, like a clean sine wave oscillator. Send a regular signal into input A and an inverted version into B. Modulate it with an audio rate control voltage, you create a ring modulator. A crossfader can also be used as a switch. For example, send one pattern into input A and another into input B. A strong positive voltage in the CV input will select pattern A and a strong negative voltage pattern B. Most modules that need a trigger to work, for example drum modules, work with low trigger voltages. So in that case, you can use a crossfader as a trigger combiner when mixing two trigger patterns with a 50-50 ratio. Of course, you can modulate that input for variations. In logic terms, this setup is called an OR function, meaning that the output is high when either of the inputs is high. You can also create an AND function when sending positive gates to input A and the CV input with no input to input B. You need to offset the gates to the CV input so that without input, input B is opened. This way the output is high only when input A and the CV input are high. All these different functions make the crossfader a great tool in many different situations. Let's start with having a look at a few basic setups. In this setup, a crossfader is used to create simple wave morphing by sending two different waveforms into input A and B. You can use two shapes like a sine and square wave from a single oscillator. The crossfader is modulated with a smooth random voltage. To finish this voice, the result is sent through a filter and controlled with a single sequencer, triggering a simple envelope modulating the filter. In this setup, the crossfader is used as two VCAs controlling the volume of two simple voices. Each voice is made with a single oscillator, filter, sequencer and envelope. By sending something like a slow sine wave LFO or smooth random voltage to the crossfader, you can sweep the balance between the two voices, 
and create nice attention shifts. You might want to attenuate the modulation signal for a more subtle effect. Here's an example with the crossfader used with control voltages to add depth to a single simple voice. Beside the modulation from the envelope to the filter, you can send two additional sources into the crossfader. For example, use a slow sine wave LFO and a fast audio rate signal, and have the result modulate the filter as well. You can even tune and sequence the second oscillator if you like. Now use another LFO or random voltage to sweep the balance between the two input signals. A classic setup using the crossfader as a polarizer is with envelopes. Let's start with a simple voice, controlled by a sequencer triggering an envelope. You can use the crossfader to make the envelope more dynamic, like I showed in the first chapter. You can send a regular envelope into input A and an inverted version into input B. In this case, the result is used to modulate the filter. When you send something like an LFO to modulate the crossfader, you sweep between a positive and negative envelope. And let's make some ring mod sounds while we're at it. Send a single audio rate signal, like the result of a simple drone voice made with an oscillator and a wave folder into input A, and an inverted version into input B. Now use another audio rate signal, like a sine wave from another oscillator, to modulate the crossfader. Add a lot of reverb and tweak the oscillators to taste. In this setup, two different trigger patterns are sent to the inputs of the crossfader. A manual bipolar offset voltage is used to control the fader. You can trigger anything you like, of course, but in this case, a kick is triggered to keep things clear. Using the manual offset, you can select pattern A, pattern B, or a combination of both patterns. In the next few patches, I'll use both cross faders of the Doug for A1342 in a variety of functions to create more complex setups. For example, let's make a complex drone by sending two different sine wave oscillators into a cross fader. Tune the oscillator slightly different and send the result to a wave folder. The voice is completed with a filter and VCA. Now you can use a modulation source, for example a smooth random voltage, to modulate the cross fader. This will shift the balance between the two sine waves and result in lovely tones when folded. To add more depth, send a copy of the random voltage into the input of a second crossfader and another LFO to the second input of that crossfader. You can make another multiplication of the random voltage to modulate the speed of that LFO. Finally, use another LFO to modulate the second crossfader and send the result to modulate the filter and or wave folder for a more dramatic effect. In this setup, two crossfaders and a controller are used to create a dynamic playable voice. A wavetable oscillator and noise are sent to the first crossfader. The controller tunes the oscillator and triggers a short attack decay envelope modulating the crossfader. This shifts the balance to noise, creating a little transient at the beginning of the sound. The second crossfader receives two LFOs, one faster triangle and one slower square wave. Another LFO triggered by the controller is set to one-shot sample and hold mode, 
creating a different value every time you press a key. That mix is modulating the wavetable oscillator. Finally, the gate from the controller is also sent to a full ADSR envelope, opening the filter over a longer time. Here, the first crossfader is used as a ring modulator. A simple sine wave oscillator is sent to input A and the multiplication is inverted and sent to input B. A wavetable oscillator is modulating the crossfader to create those classic ring mod sounds. The voice is finished with a simple low pass gate. To add depth, a second crossfader is used with the same concept, but on control voltages. An envelope is sent to input A and the copy is inverted and sent to input B. A slow sine wave oscillator is sweeping that envelope from positive to negative and back. And the result is modulating the pitch of the wavetable oscillator. Finally, a clock is used to trigger a fast plucky envelope, opening the gate, and a division is used to trigger the envelope modulating the pitch of the wavetable oscillator. Crossfaders are also great for manual control over a synth voice. Here, the first crossfader creates a mix of a triangle and square wave oscillator, used as the input for a quantizer, creating melodic sequences for the voice. The second crossfader is sent a steady clock, as well as an LFO in one shot sample and hold mode triggered by that same clock. An offset control is used to modulate the crossfader, and the result is triggering an envelope modulating the filter. This way, you can manually mix between the steady clock and the sample and hold signal, which will only occasionally be strong enough to trigger the envelope. Of course, you can exchange the offset voltages with things like LFOs if you want to automate the motion. I hope these examples encourage you to explore more, as the possibilities are pretty much endless. If you'd like to learn more about alternatives to VCAs, you can have a look at this video, or browse through my modular videos in this playlist. Also, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now, thanks for watching, and see you next time.